All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and today we've got some Bitcoin and crypto news for you, and a little examination of whether or not these lows are in. And it seems to me, as far as I can tell, that retail thinks we are nowhere near the lows. Retail thinks that 50% declines are coming, that at the very least the new, the, the recent lows are gonna get taken out for both the stock market and for Bitcoin. I'm seeing an increasing amount of confidence in a 14K or 12K Bitcoin. And whilst it's a market and anything can happen, the data simply shows this isn't true. So I'm gonna share that with you. So just before we do the news, I wanna point something out. Plan B has conducted a survey and it shows that over 50% of people have not read the Bitcoin white paper and over 80% have never run a Bitcoin node. If you've never run a Bitcoin node, I, I don't hold this against you. Um, you'll need to buy like a Raspberry Pi or something. You need to buy a 500 plus gigabyte uh, SD card for it, some sort of memory or, or external hard drive. You'll take you a couple of hours to set it up. And unless you're some kind of uh, super computer wizard, then you'll likely need to find a tutorial on how to do it. And it will take you a few hours. So I don't hold it against you. If you've never run a Bitcoin node. However, if you haven't read the Bitcoin white paper and you hold Bitcoin, then just slap yourself in the face right now because this is unacceptable. <laughs> how, how do you sleep at, at night holding something that you don't really understand that you haven't even truly read the, the white paper? So I don't know about this. I'm sure I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure you don't fall into this category, but if you do, just click this link or you know type in bitcoin.org and read it for yourself. There's an audio book of it on uh, YouTube if you prefer audio books, but it's only nine pages as well. It's only about 15, 20 minute read. And it likely explains why the Bitcoin price is where it is. Because if people understood this thing, if they truly understood what Bitcoin was instead of just buy it because they thought it was gonna go up, then maybe we would be significantly higher than 20K right now. Indonesia's largest tech company has just entered Bitcoin and crypto market with an exchange acquisition. So we are seeing continued adoption, continued adoption worldwide, and I'm sure we will continue to see continued adoption. The Bitcoin MVRV Z score has finally left the green box. So you can see this green box here. And it's not until we cross the red line that we truly get this party started. We're about coming in for a retest at the top of the green box by now. If I'm right, and I'll get into this in just a second, the lows are in for Bitcoin, then we could expect this to start moving up and getting towards the red line by the end of the year, uh, crossing that early next year, potentially, or even as early as Christmas time. And then we can start a true bull market for Bitcoin. So let's keep going. We have also got Bitcoin Magazine showing us that 65.74% of all Bitcoin has not moved in over a year. People do understand Bitcoin and the people that have accumulated it and acquired it realize that it is designed to be tucked away and held for times much darker and much harder than currently and is essentially a short position against the fiat currency system, right? If you believe that the fiat currency system is going to implode and is already imploding around us, if you believe that inflation is gonna to continue to get worse and worse over time, then Bitcoin is your exit from the system. And of course, Bitcoin also has the added benefit of being property that you can actually own and cannot be confiscated or censored. So Bitcoin key whale addresses have skyrocketed to a six month high, despite the bearish sentiment. So what we're seeing here is that whilst retail were incredibly bearish, whilst there are insane calls for 5K or 10K or even 12 or 14K Bitcoin riddled all over social media and all over the internet and YouTube, what we're really seeing is the smart money, the big money, the whales, this is entities holding 100 to 10,000 coins, okay? They don't care. They're not waiting for 10K. They're not waiting for 14K. They are accumulating at these current levels. And what we've seen over the past 30 days is a rise of 103 more of these whale addresses within the last 30 days. Okay, so not only are the whales accumulating, but new ones are being born. This says to me that most likely the whales are not going to let the price drop below the prior low, meaning that we are likely at the lows. We've likely already seen the bottom for Bitcoin. A luxury watchmaker, Jacob & Co, has released a limited edition Bitcoin watch. So I'm not big into watches myself but there's a link in here that takes you to the website and there you can see that it's more of a side view watch viewed from the top it's not super special in my opinion but each to their own um, if you're a watch guy and a bitcoin guy then maybe this is for you continuing with this theme of the lows being in wall street believes the bitcoin price has hit a bottom after the key move by the fed 
So they reckon that Bitcoin prices likely hit a floor after Jay Powell's speech at the Jackson Hole Symposium. Wall Street analysts believe the US Federal Reserve Chair's comments on financial markets triggered a Bitcoin price drop. Bitcoin's price began an uptrend, eyeing a target of 21,895. Analysts remain bullish on Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin price floor may well already be in. Now, of course, you could say, well, yeah, this is just some, this is just some article, and yeah, you'd be right. But in my opinion, there's no real reason to think that we need to take out those lows other than extremely bearish sentiment. Now, if you haven't seen this video, the lows are in that I did uh, on the 21st of August, I'd encourage you to go and watch that. That was highly data driven and showed that realistically, a lot would have to go wrong for the stock market to take out its lows. And if the stock market lows are going to hold, which at this time, I, be I really believe they will, then it's hard for me to make the case. I think it's hard for anyone to make the case that we're just going to, um, we're just going to take out the lows on Bitcoin. I don't see any reason for us to do that. Now, of course, as a market, anything can happen. But personally, I err on the side that the lows are already in for both the stocks and for Bitcoin. And it's not just me that thinks that. Here's Raul Paul, and you can see here that he agrees with what I say. For the next couple of months, I'm expecting it to be signaling a full recession. And we'll get to the tipping point where bond yields start to fall. It'll start affecting asset markets. So I'm not a believer we go to new lows. I've done surveys after survey and seen all the surveys on Twitter. 70% of all respondents in crypto and macro think equities go to new lows. Now, if that is the case, then most people are positioned for it. So therefore, the path of pain is the opposite. And I think the markets price that in. So I think there's no certainties in this world. I can be wrong. But my view, the balance of probabilities are for me that the, the uh, risk asset market, equities, crypto, have bottomed. We are having a retest. And as the economic data shifts and bond yields come down, that'll drive that further and it'll be a further hated rally because nobody will understand. We're going into recession. Why are equities going up? Well, because they already priced the recession. It's their job to be forward-looking indicators. So that's kind of the big picture framework. So there you have it. Max Payne would likely be to the upside and people would not really understand. They would be saying to themselves, how is this possible that we get a violent stock market rally? How is it possible when we've got a recession and the Fed hiking rates and so on and so forth? But I think a lot of this is going to come down to potentially a shock CPI print. Um, that remains to be seen. Now, I have closed my long on the VIX for a profit. I closed it in the morning and then went fishing for the day. And I will show you my justification for this. My justification for this is I was hoping, first of all, that we would get to the top of this trend line and we didn't it showed it didn't it didn't do what it likes to do like back here where it just explodes right explodes 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 it didn't do that it kind of came up and sort of made this consolidation bear flaggy pattern or whatever you want to call it then it came up and sort of got hung up here again so this wasn't didn't have the kind of momentum or velocity i'd like to see from the vix that was the first red flag for me um the second thing is that once the vix is above 26 which it was for you know a extended periods of time up here you need a half a percent move a decline a half a percent decline in the s p 500 just to keep it there and so that brings me on to my third point if i go over to the s p 500 chart and we measure from the cycle low we're on day 35 so the yellow line denotes a perfect 40-day cycle and somewhere between 38 days here and 42 would be a perfect expectation for a cycle low to form. So I think given how late we are in this cycle, and I also think that given that we've had such a cool off from the top to, to the current level, that is it likely that we're gonna keep seeing extended periods of half a percent or more decline from the S&P? Well, in my opinion, no, it isn't. If anything, we're likely gonna get a little bit of a bounce drop down into this daily cycle low, and then I'm gonna be looking for longs. So with all of that said, I thought it was time to close this position out. They're very expensive for me to hold open, but I had very good profit there. So I'm more than happy with that. We can get rid of that. We don't really need this trend line. I'll leave it and maybe come back and clean this chart up at another day. So there's going to be some long trades from me coming up for the S&P 500 probably early next week. You can see that we're right in this timing window. This timing window is coming into focus next week. So I don't take any positions on a Friday. That's not my style. Let's keep going. First of all, I want to point out that the smart money confidence is high. It's very high. As you can see this, smart money seems to know something different is going on behind the scenes. So don't miss out on this. 
what might they know you might be thinking well i think it could be to do with cpi the long duration tips are nearing the support level going back a decade this was last seen in q4 2018 and the summer of 2013 and if you know your market history what were both of these things well they were taper tantrums okay it appears we're in the midst of another tantrum that's nearing its end i say that again that is nearing its end and we've got the tips coming right into focus about to bounce off this support we got the us cpi print due on the 13th of september at 8 38 a.m eastern time all it would take is for this cpi number to be low and that will catalyze what raul was calling the most hated rally ever continuing with this theme we're seeing that the smart money continue to buy in the s p right here's the smart money flow index and you can see that smart money flow index just broke out to a new 52 week high a new 52 week high even though it seems like one of the most egregious extremes of pessimism we've seen in decades smart money still continues to load up okay people that have been in the markets long enough are looking for longs out of this daily cycle low the smart money the institutions are loading up likely because they're front running a shockingly low cpi print now of course we can all be wrong on this Rao can be wrong on this i can be wrong on this but so far if we just skip back to summarize We've had a lot of data from the stock market that showed that those were likely in. We've got Raul Paul saying that the most hated rally would be, and the most pain would be to the upside because everyone would be expecting the markets to come down because we're in a recession. I, the VIX is telling us that in the short to medium term, it's kind of getting hung up and that the S&P, we know from the cycle count, is due to bounce out of here in the not too distant future, like as early as next week. The smart money is full of confidence the tips on a three-month chart are almost right into support you know why should this break well it could break for a number of reasons but if the cpi is low and the fed can make some sort of a pivot then you would expect this to bounce just like it always has done historically and just like the last two taper tantrums of 2018 and 2013 we know that the cpi is coming into focus on the 13th which is right around the time that we would expect to see this daily cycle low form so could this be the catalyst to drive that higher? The smart money is continuing to buy and the flow index is at a new 52 week high. <laughs> and at the same time, we have got oil getting back to key levels. A breakdown from here would yield a $60 barrel oil or lower, which remains Rao's base case. And at that point, the one year rate of change will be zero or less, dragging down CPI. Let's see. Now this hasn't happened yet. So we can't go front running this, we can't go guessing or assuming that this will happen. But hopefully you can see with the last few tabs I've shown you, the stars are kind of aligning to suggest that we're not going to see new lows. And if we're not going to see new lows and we're going to see a big rally in equities, then it's kind of hard for me personally to make the argument that Bitcoin and crypto will make new lows. Why should they take out their prior lows if the equity markets and risk is rallying to the upside on a calling off CPI print, right? The central banks and the governments have been lying. They've been lying about the data. Remember, we recently had two negative quarters of GDP growth, and we just said that, that that's not a recession. We don't identify as a recession like that anymore. We know that they've been lying about the CPI data and emitting things from the basket in order to produce smaller numbers. And now we've got the Bank of Canada saying they didn't print money in the pandemic because they literally didn't print physical cash but they still added zeros to their accounts. They still used those added zeros to buy government bonds and perform yield curve control and balance sheet expansion. Adding zeros to your digital accounts is still money creation. And the term money printing doesn't have to refer to literal printing of physical currency, of course. So you can see that we live in this world of just ever changing definitions. They just say, oh, that, that doesn't fit our narrative. So we don't call it that anymore, but they wouldn't be doing this. Okay. If they weren't trying to hide the fact that the system is blowing up. And so looking at what they're saying at the moment, there's no reason to trust them. They, they can keep pretending like they don't want inflation and like they want to raise rates continuously and blow everything up. And maybe they do. But all of these things, coupled with the data from in this video, tell us to be much more open to the lows already being in than not. All right. So taking a look at some charts, the dollar has made a higher high. This looks and screams of consolidation before a higher move. So is this now going to run higher or is this just going to sort of chop around into next week when we got the CPI print and uh, FOMC the week after? We will continue to monitor and update this. I'm noticing the yields true breakout 
we said if we got above this level we would likely see a breakout but remember that yields of much higher than this certainly at four to five percent means the fed will default on its debt the fed will actually go broke so i would think that this is perhaps going to form a lower high and roll over and i suspect maybe the dollar will too taking a look at the equities kind of already touched on this today we're just sort of i'm going to play patient until next week and look to try and buy a daily cycle low um potentially some technical breakouts but we'll get to that next week for now i'm just going to enjoy the rest of my weekend not looking to take on any weekend risk as always nasdaq um i'm noticing we made it all the way back down to our original breakout line so that's pretty interesting wicked below and now holding above again not trying to jump in front of any trains not trying to be a hero i will i'm sure there'll be longs coming up next week so patience 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 vix already covered out of this trade so we'll see what happens if we can form a daily cycle low we should come back down here and then maybe we can look to set up some other trades in the not too distant future ukx all the way back down here look that's quite interesting to me actually so i'll stop paying more attention to this but it's not ready for me at the moment there could potentially be some form of breakout here that's pretty steep i don't really like big steep lines like that this was about as steep as i like to go the steeper they are, the lower your win rate, but the better your risk reward and the more shallow they are, the less steep, then the higher probability, the higher your win ratio and the lower your risk to reward. Oil, look at oil. Um, we had this breakout and I just wasn't really, something about this was telling me, my gut was telling me this is not this is not to be trusted. In a bull market, you absolutely take every trade and every retest, but we are in a bear market at the moment, aren't we? You can tell that just by looking at an equity chart. You know, we've been in a, the dominant trend has been down since all the way back here. So for me, I wasn't super confident about buying this. Plus we've got the whole CPI thing. I've showed Rao's chart as well here. So I would suspect that downside is more likely than upside for oil. There's no substitute for experience and experience told me that this breakout was not to be trusted. So also the stop, yeah, the stop would have been too wide for my liking. So anyway, there's no problem with sitting on the side there's no problem with letting trades pass by um, it's chasing them you want to avoid and being patient is the biggest skill a swing trader can have so i'm okay with this for now when i eventually get a better read on this there will likely be some trades but i think we have to be open to potentially a short from down here so we'll see how this goes i'm even going to take this off because i'm actually leaning more on the short size than the longs at the moment so i'll update on this as and when i see something gold is it gonna just narrowly dodge my stop and make a swing absolutely due for a daily cycle now we're actually getting pretty late so this is what day 30 here again not looking to take on any weekend risk we're better than that so we'll wait and see what happens monday if we get a nice second green candle above here on monday with a close there then i think that can become our ad silver i did say that silver likes to do this annoying thing where it scam wicks and recovers so is that what we're going to see this is stopped so we don't need that anymore i'll keep my eye on this you could argue that the safe entry would be back here. Um, we'll see how this goes. There's a less safe entry here. But again, steepness results in lower win rate, but higher risk reward. So we'll see how that goes, but I'll, I'll update on this. For now, we're still in on gold. And if you look at the miners, we are still in on the miners. So we'll see if we can actually form this daily cycle low and go. This was looking like a perfect undercut until it wasn't. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. But to be honest, I think as long as we can get a decent bounce next week, then this isn't anything to worry about. We do have to be open, though. If we lose this big red level here for gold, you can see if I scroll out, you can see where this level is derived from. If we lose that, then we've absolutely got to go short and we've absolutely got to be targeting somewhere down in the 1400s, I would think. There's a lot of cognitive dissonance in the gold market at the moment. This doesn't really make any sense. Gold has not done much at all in a long time it almost certainly is going to be repriced at some point but we can't just be dogmatic and say we need it to go up and it needs to go up soon gold's going to do whatever gold's going to do and if we're going to lose this red line then we've got to entertain shorts so that's gold bitcoin i think i've said this multiple times and not much has really changed the green vertical line denotes the 60 day cycle low we're approaching that now aren't we we're pretty close i think we're nine days away and it could be as little as three days because they can come early so looking to set up a long from this daily cycle low see how that goes but again don't really care about the weekend price action i imagine this thing will form a cycle low around the same time as the equity markets do those cycles seem aligned so we'll see how that goes
Ethereum, again, this green line denotes the 60-day cycle day for Bitcoin. I said we might get a fake out. Maybe we get that in the weekend, then the drop down into the 60-day cycle low, and then we can go from here. So I will continue to update, but for me, this needs another week of patience, roughly. And so that's it from me. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you're wondering why I didn't cover Michael Saylor, it's because I just don't buy it. I, I just don't. I just don't care. Um, we could go over it and say, oh look, he's being sued uh, for tax fraud and he's used Bitcoin for dodging taxes. But I just don't believe any of that. Um, I think he's smarter than that. I think he's got plenty of money. I don't think he needs to dodge taxes. And I think ultimately it's probably just some some feeble attempt to show that Michael Saylor is a Bitcoiner and Bitcoiners. That's all they use it for, right? Dodging taxes and criminal activity. So. I just don't really believe it. I don't really buy it. I'm not going to spend any more energy on that. It's not that I haven't noticed it, but I just, frankly, I don't care. If he's proven guilty, we'll deal with that at the time. But I honestly don't believe anything's going to come of this. I think someone's just trying to create this illusion and, and shill a narrative that he is a Bitcoiner and Bitcoiners only use their only use their money in Bitcoin for criminal activity. So anyway, that's all the energy I'm going to put into Sailor. I really don't care, to be honest, about any of that. And I don't think you should either. Um, if anyone wants me to do a deep dive on anything, throw it down in the comments. If not, enjoy your weekend and all the best from me. Take care. Cheers. Bye.